Let's talk about Megan. So Megan is a girl that worked for me. One of her goals was to move out of her parents' house. She wanted to get her own apartment. She wanted to be self-sufficient. Great goal, right? Beautiful. I love it. That was her pers personal goal. So now the next week comes and she requests two days off, but she has two normal days off that she can never work. And I'm just going to use for instance here. She can never work Tuesday and Thursday, but then she requested Friday and Saturday off. So now she's only working three days of the week. Okay. So my question is, is that an alignment, Megan, to your goal of getting out of your apartment? I don't know. Maybe you had something to do. It's not my goal. It's your goal. So I'm trying to help you achieve it. But you said you wanted to do something and then clearly now you've requested, we're going to have to get back on track next week. So now someone comes to her and says the following week and says, Hey, uh, Megan, you've got two, the next two days off. I can't work tomorrow. Can you take my shift and I can either trade with you or you can just take the hours. And Megan says, Oh no, I've got plans tomorrow. So see what's happening now is clearly Megan like the idea of moving out, getting an apartment, being on her own. But it was really a bullshit goal. It really made, it, it, it's, it's, it's not real, it's fake, right? Because she's not willing to do the work. She's not willing to sacrifice and do the things that she needs to do to succeed because she's comfortable living in her parents' house. So before we can start, we can really take action towards that goal. Megan's got a lot of growing up to do, right? So this is great feedback, right? This is beautiful because at least we know what the problem is. Now, unfortunately in this particular situation, you know, Megan's goal was too high because she's just not willing to do it, right? She's kind of full of shit. But at least I know in now what I need and how I can help Megan and how I can coach her to get better. So do you see how, how goals and, and the goals being in alignment with people's actions? Now, the next thing is relevancy and frequency. If we're not having these conversations over and over again, and if they're not very relevant to what you're doing here in the company, we're never gonna get the results. I'm not gonna get the results I need. You're not definitely not gonna get the results you want. So I, I'll give you a, a story here. So I was a board of director for a donut manufacturing plant for years, for a long time, like 20 years. I used to get in these kind of uh, interesting debates with the plant manager because now in his defense, there was, there was things that he just wasn't interested in doing, but the board of directors told him because they were trying to keep him, you know, on track and they were trying to keep a, a, a certain level of culture and environment in the plant. One of the things that they told him he had to do was complete the reviews. So what he did is he concocted this process, uh, this evaluation, and you got a score. Regardless of your job, regardless of full-time or part-time, regardless of your skill set, regardless of your leadership level, if you scored one through 10, whatever the, the number was, one, everybody got a raise, but one got the lowest raise, 10 got the highest raise. So wherever you landed, you got uh, this raise. We had some truck drivers. And this particular year, we had a good amount of accidents. Now, some were real accidents, some were bullshit accidents, right? So we had this one guy who, so Joe was doing the, the reviews in April, I think it was, right? So this guy started in March, so he was a fairly new employee. So now May rolls around, he totals a truck because he was texting. Not because he, it was an accident, not because something happened. He was texting on his phone and he drove into a guardrail because he wasn't paying attention. So I said to Joe, I said, do you wait till next year now to review this guy and to, you know, for this to, this blemish to affect him. He just cost the company. Yes, we have insurance and all that, but for, for you out there that are saying, oh, no big deal. You got insurance. Fuck you. You know, you don't know what you're talking about because I want you to have to go and deal with an accident. Thank God the guy was okay. But now that we understand that the guy is okay, there's a massive process that has to happen when, you know, you have to deal with the accident. You know, you've got a total truck, you've got to do all the insurance stuff, you've got adjusters, you have to get a new truck. Most times when you're in that situation, you end up losing. Yes, you get some money, but now you have a different payment. You know, you've, you've lost all this time and energy and aggravation. You were down the truck, so the business got disrupted. So having an accident isn't as, people who say, ah, oh, no big deal, you got insurance, they have no idea what they're talking about because they haven't done the work to have to deal with that type of situation. So sorry, I had to go off on that tangent for a minute because when people say that shit, it irritates me. I said to Joe, I said, this driver, you're not gonna talk to him about this now until April? 
Like, are you kidding me? I don't know what I ate for lunch Thursday. You're gonna wait till next year to have this conversation with him? No, by the time you have this conversation with this guy, it's gonna be gone. It's gonna be out of sight, out of mind, out of, if the guy's even still here. You have to have this conversation now, right? So I don't care about your review policy or whatever it is that you do. You need to sit down and have a conversation with this guy now. You have to set the boundaries now. You have to set the metrics now. You have to say, if this happens again, here's what's gonna happen. You have to set that now, right? So this was part of the problem. We're not, number one, the frequency you're not doing it at all. And then the, the relevancy of your conversations, you know, you're waiting to have the hard conversation for a year. We need more frequency, more regular checkups. A year is just way too long, right? We need to take employees temperature right away. So I call, you know, one of the things I set out to do when I did this review process is, is just get rid of the whole word review. This is, we, we call this a pulse check, right? I want to know where you are right now. I want to understand what things are and I need to, to correct you to get to where we need to go. So where are you at right now so I can help you get where you're gonna go? So one of the things that happens too when we waste, right? We do things the traditional way and we're not very engaged because we really don't wanna do it is we waste a ton of time, energy, and resources. And because the process is a, a burden, right? So it, it aggravates us. Imagine how many things that you do in your life and you're not engaged, you really don't wanna do it. How much energy, what's the level of energy and effort that you put into it, right? It's crap, right? So, you know, this is what ends up happening, why we have short tempers, why we get aggravated when we don't want, even wanna do it, right? So, especially when we're not prepared and we walk into something, maybe we know the person's lying, right? But we're not even prepared, right? Now, what do you do when you have this big, fancy, massive evaluation form that, you know, you've created and the, the employee checks off Ninja right? I'm the best at things and sliced bread on every single category, right? So for this reason, I like the idea of a self-evaluation. I do like the idea of the employee, evalu not employee evaluating employee, but an employee evaluating themselves, right? I like this because I want to see it through their eyes. I want to see it through their lens. Now, however, I strongly believe, and I put this into my system, that the leader does their evaluation first, right? The process is not even triggered until the leader does an evaluation first, because no more did I ever want me or one of my people walking into doing a, you know, a pulse check, or because again, we're getting rid of the word review, to walk in to do one of these and not be prepared. I want them to have already done the thinking, done the heavy lifting, and now what we're doing is we're taking the evaluation that the employee did and our evaluation, and we're seeing where the gaps are. Now, what's so interesting, one of the things that I found when we've done this process is that you would think, right, you would think that the if leadership's doing an evaluation and an employee is doing an evaluation, the and let's just say we're going to score it, right, for shits and giggles, if we're going to score it, that the, the leadership would score really low, right? Like say if it was one out of 100, we scored as a 30, right? This is what you would think. And the employee would score themselves as a 90, right? What I found more times than not is it's actually the opposite. The employee beats themselves up with a baseball bat. They're harder on themselves, especially the serious ones, especially the ones that they want the growth. They want the feedback. And, and the leadership is saying, hey, you know, you're not seeing that you do this well. You're not seeing, man, I don't have enough fingers and toes how many times I've actually seen it go the other way, which is really shocking and really surprised me. So I like the idea of evaluations, a self-evaluation, a leadership evaluation, we compare the two. However, the evaluations have to be very strategic and very tactical. They have to be on the things, the things that are important to the company, how the company works. We don't just talk after we get the goals, the personal and professional goals, now we're talking about very specific things. Compensation plan. Are you doing what you signed up for? You said you were going to do this. Are you doing that? Now, if the answer is no, it's cool. It's no, right? But that's the information we need when we go to the action. Hey, man, these are the things we got to work on. What about the culture, right? The company culture. Do you come in and destroy the culture? Are you late? Do you call in? Do you talk on your cell phone and annoy this when other people are working hard, you're over in the corner screwing off. Do you do these things? Because if you do these things, you're a culture killer, right? We need to dig that stuff out. KPIs, right? There's certain performance indicators, things that you have to do over and over and over again consistently 
It's like putting on your underwear before your pants. You got to do that, right? If you're not doing these things, that's a problem. Those are the things we got to work on. We can't talk about anything else. What? We can't even, how can we talk about money when you can't even show up to work on time? How can we talk about money when you show up out of uniform? See what I mean? So we have to get past these things first. So it doesn't mean that in another review later on, now if we're only doing this year to year, that's a problem, right? But if we're doing these every 30 days in Johnny's case, right? Because we got a lot of work to do with Johnny. So we're going to meet with Johnny every 30 days, right? But Sally, we're working on some higher level stuff. We're only meeting with her every 90 days. So see, this is what I mean that the process can change. It doesn't have to be so cookie cutter, right? It doesn't have to be the same all the time, but it has to be on the metrics of the company, right? Are you operationally sound? Are you a one trick pony and you only work in one position of the company? Well, we need you to be cross-trained and be more utilized than other areas. So we got to, the action here at the end of this, before we can talk about money and stuff is you got to be able to do some other things, man. You know, maybe you're just scared to get out of your little box, but we really need you to do this. Until, we, until you do that, th there's no more money on the table for you. So see, these are the conversations that we, you see it your way, I see it mine, let's compare the two, love it, love it, but let's break it down factually. What are we talking about, right? Now we followed up with an action and the action could be all kinds of things, not just money. So we wanna remove the review equals money piece. We wanna shoot the annual review, doing this once a year right in the head, right, and kill this thing and we wanna focus on growth and expansion. That's what we're after. If we wanna engage people at the highest level, we have to interact with them, right? We have to connect with them, and we have to coach versus ridicule. Don't just do a, do a form and check a bunch of boxes and say you suck at this, you suck at that. No, okay, you're not doing great here, right? Is that a weakness? Okay, how do we make it a strength? What do we gotta do? You can't get up in the morning? All right, how can I help you? Maybe let's get nine alarm clocks, one that has a hammer that comes out and hits you in the head and helps you get, or ooh, one that has a sound that's your mom yelling at you. Oh, that would be a good one, right? I think we just invented a new product. But see, that's what we need to get better. This is why the old review process sucks, right? And pulse checks is the future. But it has to be focused on the needs of the company. But at the same time, parallel, to what a person's professional goals are. Just like I told you about Megan, right? She wanted to get, she wanted to move out and get her own apartment. If we didn't align what she was doing in the cut, she, we can't help you get there, right? So that's what we're after. This is good stuff, guys, right? And then you know, you're gonna have people, right? You're gonna have people that don't wanna hear it. You're gonna have people that say, hey, I don't care about any of that. I just want more money. Well, maybe now what you've, you've found and you've uncovered is that they're not a good fit for your company anymore. That's okay, right? Maybe it's time to let them go and maybe they need to hear the message that they're obviously not hearing from you from somebody else. Pulse checks, where are you at? Where do you wanna go? Now, what I want you to do before you leave is I want you to click subscribe on this podcast. Hit the notification bell because we got some cool podcasts coming up. We got some guests coming on in the next few episodes. I really want you to check it out. And please, check out the calculator. We spent a lot of time putting this together because this was something, this is where I started in this journey, was trying to really understand what this revolving door was doing of people coming and going in our company, would it really cost us in money? I don't wanna, I don't care about 20%. I wanna know what it's costing me in money, right? Where does, you know, you not seeing your kids and going to your kid's soccer game fall on the p &L? You see what I'm saying? We put a value to that and I want you to check it out. So. Alan David Duck signing out. Ciao for now. See you next time.